everybody and welcome to the Nabubomi Interschool Short Film Competition. Now you are going to present your film ideas to our selection panel. You only have 60 seconds to convince them and make them want to read your scripts. My name is Posa Keshawbo. My name is Tumeka Mene. I'm born Hey, I'm Istvan Kamaniko and I'm from St. Thomas High. From High School. From Kosolani at Mado. From Govan Becky location. I'm here to enter a competition called Nabubomi. I'm here to pitch my script and I hope that I win. I feel excited and a little bit nervous. I just wanted to voice out what I'm thinking about what is happening in our lives. In our lives. I like acting and I'm doing the drama in my location, so I want to enter for my school. I am a natural born actor, if I say so myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want my voice to be heard and I have a message that every youth deserves to hear. Now last year, Theodore Herzl won Best of the Festival Award and here with me today, I have three contestants from Theodore Herzl High School here to defend their title. Now the Nabugomi crew will definitely be producing one of their scripts. But the question is, which one will it be? Okay, we'd like you to tell us your name and the name of your school and then we'll turn the timer over and give you 60 seconds to tell us your story. Okay. What's your story? Must I start mm -hmm. to pitch? Okay. Wolves in the playground. Whose side are you on? The popular kids get into a brawl with Matthew and Matthew gets really or severely injured. And we see that in the beginning when there were two groups, at the end there's now one group. We kind of lost a real sense of this is what it's really about. It became more and more and more vague. Whereas you gripped me in the beginning, I was like... It's a very common problem, but um, the outcome is also very common normally. So I was interested to see if we've got a bit of potential for something unexpected. And so that's why I am interested in reading the script. Rebecca finds out that her and Chel that Hayden and Chelsea have been sleeping together. And in the process of confronting her, she finds out that Chelsea actually is in fact pregnant. I like the story and I think I like your enthusiasm. He's trying to seduce him into a situation that is seemingly the life. The gang thing comes up very, very often. And she screams and she shouts and she says she wants to get out. Does she get out? Does yes. she stay? She gets out. I oh know, she must get stuck in the taxi. I enjoyed your character descriptions. Um, it paints a pretty clear picture. It can work to have two different mm -hmm. stories. The problem is that they don't actually connect. If you can give me an idea of where's the exciting moment in your story, then I might want to read it. A girl named Meredith, molested by her uncle since she was six, and she's never told anyone about it. It's not a new message. This issue is common to all schools. A girl and a boyfriend who are, are caught um, doing drugs. At the end, she like writes about it in a diary. What she needs to do is, is find a unique take on it, or what's going to make it really special and uniquely your story. It's very difficult to communicate what somebody is feeling when they're writing in a film. You've either got to use flashback or, um, or use some sort of visual thing because if it's just words, it's going to get boring quite quickly. Because uh, her boyfriend advised her and told her to, to make peace with her mother. For me, there wasn't enough in it. To, to make me want to read the script. Her stepdad is physically, emotionally, and sexually abuses her. At the end of the story, the girl came out and tells the story. It's a nice story, but it just doesn't really, you know, give us enough. As they saw in a joint one day, his best friend tells him a story about his girlfriend cheating on him. And after they found the guy, they found that it's actually not him. It's actually his best friend. And then Morris told him, wait, don't spill, don't spill innocent blood. It's, it is a bit complicated. Um, it's very passionate. Is it based on a true story or what really inspired you? I just made it up. I just made it up. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I want, I want to read it. <laughs> you know, I just, I just like your, your character. So I just... <laughs> <laughs> you guys can tell me anything I need, need to change the script. Tell me. I will make the adjustments. I will do whatever you guys want me to do. Whatever. The basic story of my movie is about four students who have nothing common from the outside, but all have a sad secret inside their hearts, which they don't talk about. Those secrets are shown by little flashbacks from each of them. I love the idea, you know, people say, I'm fine, I'm fine all the time. They just answer, I'm fine, when they're really not. 
Some of them didn't go to school and continue in school. So the teacher thinks that Nomvula have an affair and Nomvula is going to the club all night. The message is this film, Nomvula, the teacher must ask the children what's going on at school. It would be nice to have a story like this that could do well. However, I, I also don't feel as if that um, story where it's at right now is going to um, really carry that message through that you want it to carry through. Well, this is a film to watch because you know why? It answers those questions for you. Because you know why? It states clear how to deal with unwanted pregnancy. We're involving everybody who's watching to decide for Nombomelelo where her future lies. How do you make us decide in the story? Is that where the story ends? Yes. So then you decide, like, what is she going to do at, at, in the future? It leaves you with a question mark. I like that element, the potential there in your story too. To have that open ending, I think it could be very powerful. She's determined to, to succeed in life, and then she meets the wrong crowd, and then does the wrong things. My parents don't work. Oh, I wish I had that. I wish I was like her. I can't become a doctor, even though I know I'm capable of doing something like that. I'm not feeling confident that I, I still actually have almost no idea of what's even in the script. This popular guy fell in love with this girl. He was adopted. Later on, he finds out that she is from Zimbabwe. When he turns his friends against her and everybody and a mob surrounded her and got her, he found out that his biological parents are also from Zimbabwe. I kind of like the topic. Uh, maybe it's because that's what should be happening. Um, maybe I would love to, okay. to read the story. She takes drugs and, you know, she wants to mutilate herself. And then right there in front of her is like a sign of encouragement. And that's the time where she, point where she realizes, you know what, I'm, I can be whoever I want to be. I don't care what people say about me. The sign that she sees, what is that? It's like a, like a note thing that says a script from the Bible from Luke and then it's like stuck there by the door. You've definitely got potential to write for the screen. Just got to find something that perhaps is a little more external conflict. This guy loves school girls. And then Tamisa was interested with Joe. Then she wanted to work for Joe. Tamisa's friend was Lulu. And then Lulu was interested in doing this job. And then she did too, but at the end, Lulu died of AIDS. She becomes a prostitute. You have this character who just goes after school girls, basically. I like it. I want to read it. Did they take it? No, they didn't, unfortunately. No, sadly not. No, they're not going to lose my friend. We were right, but I am disappointed. I was quite nervous, but I was fine because they're so friendly with you and everything, and you feel like you belong there. They're going to read my script. Yeah, they did show it. How are you feeling? Very well, very, very excited. I can't even speak. <laughs> I feel like very happy. What do you hope to achieve through that film? Um, a positive message and everything and, 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 and some recognition for myself. Hey, I want to be um, a star one day. <laughs> <laughs>
She's challenging you to listen. Action. Perfect. I'm sorry, we need to kind of wait for this winter down a little bit. I'll get an alarm in the background. See you next month. <laughs> Are you ready? Can we do one last one? <laughs> all of us, every student, they all have secrets inside them they don't speak about them for example like bulimia is a very big topic and um drugs and alcohol obviously and um i want to point that out in my film this year I actually crave a chocolate right now cut it obviously concerns itself with uh, issues which are pertinent to today's youth and they're obviously able to communicate in the type of uh, language type of style uh, which is uh, pertinent to teenagers to that age group so I endorse it fully. Did your involvement in last year's number warming influence your planning in any way this year? It did help me a lot. Now I actually know what I what I what to expect, and um, yeah, I did I did do a lot of research again, and I worked with the actors and everything. So I'm nervous, but very excited again. I am the script supervisor, so technically I just. Keep, make sure everybody's keeping their lines and I let the clicky person, <laughs> like, I let them know what shot and what scene we're on. Scene one, shot 1.1, take two. Action! I enjoy acting and drama and cultural things, so I offered Laura, I'd say, to I'll help out wherever I can and preferably behind the camera to get different angles on the different parts of acting and, well, theatre and TV and movies I suppose. Thank you. Okay well I've got to go. I think I'm needed now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Post the camera. Uh, my name is Caught Me. Lynn, tell us about Miranda. Well Miranda is a girl who's being abused by her father. He beats her. Her mother's dad when she was three years old. So she's a very dark character. I don't know who I'm supposed to be right now. <laughs> tell us about your character. Um, Ethan's a very sad character and he's got a lot of sadness kept in him. And he basically puts on this facade that he's happy. Action! Now that you've done stage, well, how do you feel about being in front of the camera now? Uh, to be honest, it's a bit more nerve-wracking than I thought because there's actually a person behind the camera. <laughs> you know it's not. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. I mean, I've never felt something like that before. I saw, I saw my actor Deepan on the screen, and I saw his tears, and then my tears came, and then I saw him shaking, and it was so emotional that I just, I couldn't stop. We just done shooting. Is it what you wanted? I'm very happy with um, what we've done today. Um, all the shots are very beautiful. I'm so happy and. Yeah, I'm tired now, obviously, but um, I can't wait now to see the, end of the, the final product of it. They're like traumatizing this time. They're like, work, work. Did you do anything differently this time around? The only thing that I did do differently was um, how I acted with the characters. For example, last year I only had one main character to work with. Now I had four, and so I had to split my concentration on each of them. Turn a bit towards me again, so it's, well, this to this corner, okay? So we can see your face better. Okay, can we do this quickly again? Number Bobby made me realize what I want to do after school, which I'm really grateful for. And yeah, I want to be a director one day, and it's been an amazing experience again. Laura, you've seen the first cut. Do you feel the story is flowing the way you wanted it? Absolutely love it. I'm really happy with what I've seen so far. 
I didn't know what I wanted to do until Nairobi came and I had the opportunity to film this movie and uh, it was just great, I loved it and I'm a different person when I have the opportunity to direct and to go into this whole story so deeply and um, I realised that that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Listen, listen to them, listen, then you can feel their pain, just listen. In every one of us is something that we hide, never speak about, something we wish we could understand, but it will never make sense to us, never. How are we doing with this shot, man? Is it coming right? Hi, and who are you? Hi, I'm Miranda. Hi, Miranda. You're looking a bit worried today. Is everything okay? Yeah, doing good, thanks. Nice to hear that, Miranda. Okay, that's looking good. Yeah, should we go? Hey, Susan, you must be very good at school, aren't you? I think I can answer that question myself, whether you are or not. I like school. I study hard. My parents want me to be a doctor. That's great. That's great. Well, what do you do at the weekends? Hi Ethan, hey. you enjoying your soccer? Yeah, I love soccer. We're pretty good, you know. We've won nearly every match. <laughs> yeah, and you're also enjoying school? School? Are you kidding me? Who does? Okay, have a good match then. See ya. Okay, with that shot. Hi, girls. Hi. Hi. Your apple looks nice. But is that all you eat? Don't you ever buy anything at the tuck shop? It's all I eat. I don't like that stuff from the tuck shop. It's all fattening, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really don't understand you girls. I personally am craving a bar of chocolate right now. Since the age of four, Miranda has been abused by her father. Her mother died when she was three. Miranda goes through hell every single day. She gets weaker by the second. Susan has never had a friend or a sister or a loving parent. Her parents have high expectations of her. She cries every single night before she goes to bed and wishes to never wake up again. Ethan forgets his pain by taking drugs. He lost his best friend in a car accident two months ago. He was with him when he died. Lila thinks she is not beautiful, not thin enough to be looked at. Her boyfriend cheats on her. For her, the only way to get him back is to lose weight, to basically starve herself to death. When we least expect it, when our tears run out, when we think it's too late, then there will be a turning point in life. Miranda, I'm so sorry to tell you this. Your father died this morning. He hanged himself. I can't believe you got a C in math. 
You won't get into university with that mark. Ethan, your blood test is positive. I'm sorry. Lala, I'm sorry. It's over between us. If we could turn back time, would you change anything? Listen to those around you. Hear them cry out for help before it is too late. Shh. Can you hear them? Listen, and she's telling me, Ahmad, Ahmad, Ahmad. 